This is the story, A Civilized Schnauzer. It's based on a real dog that we had named Otto. And uh, it's in a setting that has some truth and some of it is fictional. A Civilized Schnauzer by Priscilla Sills. Now, back when we lived on the farm, my sister and me, we had a different life we did. Then that there city feller come and take her away. They moved quite a bit, and eventually she settled down in the Big Apple. Yep, settled down right where he dumped her for someone prettier and younger with no kids. So her and the kids, they stayed on a spell till she got enough cash to come back home. Except after living the high city life for a few years like she did, she had to move into town. No more farm life for her. Well, then she gets this job of cooking for this old lady relative of the mayor who takes her and the kids back to her townhouse in the state capital. And afore the old lady dies, she gives sis one of the litter of schnauzers her own bitch has. Then one of her friends hires my sis after the old lady goes on to her reward. Naturally, if sis is going to still work to support her kids, she's got to do something with this pup. So she sends me a letter and she says, Come move in with me and the kids. We are living in the suburbs. I got a cooking job again, and this time an apartment comes with it. There is room for you. You will take care of the pup. Now, seeing as I was through with school, 10th grade being enough for me, I figures, why not? So I says bye to the folks, packs my bag, and off I goes on the Greyhound bus. Now, I tells you all this so y'all understand how I come to be here caring for Otto the Schnauzer. I stays home during the day while sis is at the big house of cooking. Then in the evening, I goes off to night school whilst she's home with the kids. Even though this here pure breed pup would bring a pretty penny, sis can't bring herself to part with him. He's got a sentimental value, she keeps a telling me. After several months, I begins to see how she feels. I am getting attached to this here doggy myself. Now, I begun to tell you how Otto is a civilized schnauzer. It's this way. After living in the city for a few years, the kids had got some highfalutin ideas about life. And one morning, I comes down to breakfast, and what do I see? It's them kids and Otto are sitting at the table eating breakfast. I mean, Otto himself is a sitting on a chair and eating from a bowl. I mean, he's wearing a hat and a tie clipped onto his collar and he's got a cloth napkin spread over his sitting legs, and he's bending over the bowl with his head, eating just as calm and dainty as any gentleman. Now, I knows those kids can be persuasive, but I never thought Otto had it in him. As I come in the room, all pop-eyed, goggling at the sight, he just turns his head, looks me up and down, and goes back to eating, as natural as anything. This here schnauzer is one impressive cuss. He's a regular, civilized schnauzer. A Serious Schnauzer by Priscilla Sills. A year ago or so, my sister says she has a gift for me. She says the woman she worked for give it to her. It's worth a bundle, she says, but she don't have room in her apartment for him. For him, I says to myself. Well, that him ended up being him, who I calls Otto. He looked too distinguished like for a name like Buddy or Blue. And I moves in with my sister and her kids into the suburbs to care for him. He and me, we had lots of adventures in the suburbs we did. <clears throat> well, first thing out that night, we came upon one of them dogs full of skin. You know, them wrinkly critters. So Otto, he stops and poses. Like a hunting dog pointing to the quarry, he looked. Then he commences to straining at the leash, he does. But that wrinkly feller, 
He knew his business all right. He just turned toward Otto and growled and a stood his ground. So I says to Otto, dog, that boy looks like he's going to eat you in one swaller. And I dragged him out of there, but quick. I heard the other dog's owner calling. Oh, he's really quite friendly. But I wasn't taking no chances. So he's walking along. The sky's a mess of wispy clouds and mist covering a big old moon. Then Otto catches a scent. Like a bloodhound he was, running along, nose to the ground. I could almost hear the baying of the rest of the pack. Well, on he goes with me keeping pace for maybe 100 yards. Then he stops, circles round, and does what he came out for to begin with. And so we're walking again, enjoying the evening. And before I knows it, that dog's a backpedaling. I turn around just in time to see me hold nothing but a leash and an empty collar. And there goes a blur gray round the corner. Then complete silence. Not a car, nor a train, no doors banging, nor birds calling. Not a cricket, not even a breeze. Then whoosh! Not three seconds later, here comes Otto round in that corner, low to the ground in a puff and dust with a dog about the build of Incredible Hulk, 10 feet behind and closing. Twas then I could see what stuff he was made of. Why, that schnauzer, he went flat out as fast as he could. All them months of chilling, chasing him up and down and up and down the stairs weren't for nothing. I tell you, he was one fine dog, aerobically speaking. While the Hulk must have been punching the time clock at the doggy snack bar, Otto had been in serious training, and it showed now. He was a reaping the benefits of months of training. Well, up to me he runs. I looks at him, he looks at me, and I holler, let's go home, boy, and off we run. I don't know what become of that Hulk dog. Never did see him round here again. And that night, I never took time to look back whilst we was a-running for the safety of home. But I knows for sure, I got me a serious schnauzer here when it comes to the chase. A Survival Schnauzer by Priscilla Sills. Well, when I first laid eyes on this here doggy, I figured him to be a gentleman in a top hat. He was a dignified, cultured-looking cuss with not a hair out of place. He had him a beard and a mustache and style and moose eyebrows, so naturally I figured him to be a sissified kind of house pet. But my views has changed a good bit since then. This here is a survival schnauzer for sure. He may not hold any degrees in nothing, and he may not be the brightest at times, but this here doggy knows how to survive. Why, just last week, we was out walking. Every time he stops across the street to sniff the dirt pile by the storm sewer. Seeing as the streets is all paved here with cement, the city's got to make a place for the rainwater to go. So they built storm sewers. But the fellers that built the roads weren't on to the same plan. They didn't necessarily make them roads to channel that water into the holes them sewer fellers put in. So when it precipitates, as them weather folks say on the cable TV, that water just swirls around across the street. It eventually flows on down that sewer, but not before it deposits a load of silt and leaves and other stuff by the roadside. So, this pile of stuff is what Otto is a smelling every day, looking like he's lost his gold pocket watch or something. And one day, he finally found it. Now, you need to know that this here Otto looks like if he would be a smoker, it would be something along the lines of tipperillos or a skinny cigar in a holder. But I found out different the day he found his pocket watch, so to speak. There it was. He had found whatever it was he had been a-searching and a-sniffing for day after day. 
and it was a half-smoked stogie, all exploded looking, with pieces of tobacco hanging out, all frayed here and there. The feller who must have smoked this thing had chewed it good before tossing it out of his Cadillac window. Well, Otto grabs a hold of this stogie and looks like he hasn't eaten in a week. He commences to chew this thing and swallow it down before I could reel him in to try to get to it. I says, Mr. Doggy, sir, you is in for a mess of trouble. And I guess so am I. I read them books that come with you and you has got a sensitive gut. And I just stood waiting for him to up Chuck. Do you know that dog, he never did have an ill effect from that nasty old smoker he had. I must have waited 10 minutes for him to start a heaving, but he just continued on as ever, frisking and a running and a sniffing every speck on the ground. I come to see through that experience that this here ain't no top hat doggy. He is more like them hunt, hunting gentlemen magazine doggies. Yeah, if he were a person, he'd be wearing a turtleneck and corduroy pants, and he'd be a model for the L.L. Bean catalog. Why, he may look to be sissified to some folks, but this here is a survival schnauzer. If and he was a starving in the suburbs, he could live off of stogies thrown from Cadillacs if and he had to. Otto and the Italian Greyhounds by Priscilla Sills. Now, for a neighborhood like this one, I reckon we's got a heck of a lot of dogs. I'd say there's at least one in every other house. When we's out a walking, Otto and me, some nights we sees the entire collection. There's old Dr. Benson across the road with his Westie. That's short for West Highland Terrier. Otto don't like that all white doggy no how. And that terrier, he feels mutual. A couple of houses down is one of them retrieving dogs. She's got silky golden hair. If and she was a woman instead of a dog, she'd be perfect for one of them clear oil commercials. Then a couple of houses to other way is one of them Alaska mush dogs. You know them hairy brutes that pulls Sergeant Preston round the frozen Yukon in his sled. That doggy must get powerful warm in these Carolina summers. Next door, we's got two Labrador dogs, black as coal. They's right popular dogs these days. My sis got me all fixed up with a big old dog book so I could be up on all the latest in the doggy world. She says, if and I'm gonna be the caretaker of a pure breed dog, I gotta get a studied up on the subject. One thing I learned from that dog book is true as can be. Dogs don't take no notice of size. It's all in the personality to them. I mean, this schnauzer must weigh one third of each of them Labradors, but personality wise, he's right in their weight class. Now that's a mess of doggies already. And that ain't all. There's a spaniel dog down the way, just as pretty and wavy hair as ladies pays at the beauty shop for her every week. His name's Fred. <laughs> Otto don't like him no how. There's Mabel. She's another black Labrador. And there's that full of skin wrinkly dog. You know, I done told you about him. He's the quite friendly feller who I ain't taking any chances on. There's the dogs from hell, as the neighbors call them. Two little schnauzers they be too. Barking day after day like someone's a trying to murder them. In dog talk, these lady dogs, uh, these are called bitches. And I'd say these two is that way in people talk too. Then there's a few dogs of no consequence I seen around. Little pieces of fluff, Yorkshire Terriers they is. Cute little lap dogs. Usually some big burly feller walks them. Reckon his wife makes them to do it. And there's one Chinese dog. Couldn't tell its front from its rear. Turns out it had a stick-up tail in back and a ponytail in front. Asked the owner lady one day what you call the thing. She says to me, 
Crumpy is a Shih Tzu. Now, at first, I didn't know how to take this. Then I recollected a reading about them in the dog book. So I says to her, and I got me here a Sha Nauser, name of Otto. Well, she opened her eyes wide, raised them painted eyebrows, gave a smirk and walked off. I don't rightly think she took to what I said. Don't know why, but she don't speak no more when I pass her and her sheet zoo in the road. Now, getting round to them Italian fellers. I'm sure you heard of them big old Florida greyhounds that run in the races, and so did I. But one day I'm a walking auto and he commences to pull at that leash. Well, what do we see through a little white picket fence but two miniature white and brown Florida greyhound looking doggies? They's a popping straight up and down like they's got springs for paws. Now, I'm partial to Italian food, and I knows Otto's got a German streak in him, seeing as that's what them schnauzers come from. And Germans and Italians don't necessarily get along so good. Well, he's a pulling and a straining to get a look at these fellers. You'd have thought he's found some long lost kin. And no sooner than he get a snoot full of sniff of them, but he snorts it out and goes back to sniffing the ground. After one single whiff, those Italian fellers held no more fascination for Otto than a piece of, well, Truthfully speaking, I can't think of nothing that don't interest Otto. Well, nothing except them Italian greyhounds. The Shiverin' Schnauzer by Priscilla Sills. Now, I reckon you figures I'm a writing about the cold snap of 98, and you'd be right. It was a cold March that year. The freezingest day was recorded in history as March the 10th. But that year it was a piece later, with hard freezes up until about a week later than that. Well, that cold snap, rather than making that schnauzer shiver, it made him frisky as can be. Spite of Sissy's protests, I left the old boy as hairy as a bear. He had four white natural boots a looking like an Eskimo, he did. And his hair grew so long and shaggy, Septin for his beard, you'd never knowed he was a schnauzer. He was no top hat looking fancy feller that winter, but he kept warm for sure. So we's out a walking one of them cold days in March. And Otto, he's as perky as can be. He's a jaunting along, almost whistling a tune and looking pleased with life. We walked one of our usual routes past a huge oak. This thing was so old and big, the roots looked like dough someone had set to rising. But the dough got left out too long and overflowed the pan. And these roots looked just like as if they had been baked like that and all overflowed like. They came from about a foot and a half up the tree and progressed in bumps and lumps on down the trunk and right out of the dirt and over the curb onto the asphalt. Fact is, there was lots of trees like this in our neck of the woods. But back to Otto. He was bouncing along, springing from one paw to the other, and he tried to run into some piles of leaves left over from the fall that nobody had ever picked up. But I don't let him do such a thing, as his long hair attracts them leaves like a magnet to filings, and he looks like he's a carrying a bag of leaves under his belly if he gets into them piles. Then... I gots to brush him out real careful like, lest he spread leaf crumbs all over the house for the next week. Sissy says, you have him clipped and this won't be a problem. But I figures he needs to keep warm. Well now, I mentioned Otto Shivering. You'd have thought in such cold weather down in the 30s with a stiff breeze that he'd shiver all right. But no, he enjoyed it. What set him to shivering was the sight of them migratory birds. This time of year in the South, we get flocks of birds a coming back to their northern homes from their winter vacations. Them birds go to Florida and Mexico and South America even. 
and then the urgent commences with them to go home round about when the jonquils bloom. So up they comes and stops off wherever there's food to stock up on along the way. Our yard is full of them berry bushes of all types, and they's the kind them birdies likes, so they stops off here regular, like the diner stop on the Greyhound bus. And these birds set Otto to shiverin'. He must have it in his little ancestral brain that this means a chase and maybe a meal. I have seen other doggies jump, but when he sees a bird up a tree, this here schnauzer beats them all. You'd have thought he was spring loaded. He explodes straight up off of the ground in the direction of the bird, and if and I got him on a tight leash, that's when he commences to shiverin. He strains at the leash and shivers with excitement as if he was about to take off and fly. Why, he reminds me of them hairy air jets that vibrates and rumbles and then straight up and off they go. Well, Sissy, she don't care much for Otto's liking for chasing birds. She says it's not ecological like to let them scare them. I don't know as I agrees. I mean, he's an animal too, and it's his yard, not theirs. But anyway, I'm a thinking he could have been one of them hunting dog pointer fellers if and he had less hair and some spots. He makes a stance before he shivers and jumps where he stands stock still, lifts up a front leg. He's a got one paw cock, just like the pictures you see hanging on the walls in lawyers' offices. I seen him when our night school class visited some potential places of employment one time. But old Otto, he ain't no hunter doggy. He's just a curious schnauzer, all harried up for the cold weather and a thinking he's gone back to the caveman days a getting his meals by the hunt and the chase. I'm not so sure he'd know what to do if and he ever did catch one of those birds. But Sissy says, she says she don't want to find out. For those of you who have been wondering, most of the stories here took place in Augusta, Georgia, in the neighborhood, the Somerville neighborhood um, around McDowell Street near Montesano Avenue in back of what was then Augusta College. All of the dogs in these stories are real, although the names of all but the main character have been changed to protect the innocent. The people may or may not be real, uh, mostly conglomeration of real people that I have known. And the reason that the stories are called the Schnauzer stories is because my youngest child understood that the type of dog that Otto was, was a Schnauzer, but she would say Schnauzer. So that's why we made these, the Schnauzer stories. I hope you enjoyed them.